like that, but it was, and there you are. Hey, hey, y'all. How y'all doing? I hope I'm in the right place. I hope so. Let me go live on this one. Hey, hey. We're late. I know, I know. We were having some sound problems. My sound man was having some technological difficulties. But hello, hello, everyone. I feel like it's been forever since we've been live. Has it been more than one week? Hi, Felicia. We're connected to YouTube. I'm not seeing Facebook. Oh, man. We'll see what happens. Are we not on Facebook? I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. I know everyone's been having trouble going live on Facebook lately. Ooh. It's muy caliente. Okay, it's not really hot. It's just sort of hot, but it's warm in here in my shed and we can't turn the air on because it's loud and the microphones don't like it. Hey, Joanne. I know you guys hang tight. We're going to be doing some really, ex I'm, I'm hoping it's exciting crafting today. Um, okay. I've been playing in my laboratory, so we're going to play today with some really fun stuff. You know what? I didn't make sure if I had a criminies and I don't see one either. A, um, oh, here's one. <laughs> of course it has stuff on it, but we'll be okay. A brayer. We are going to be doing um, some embossing today and um, some stamping and tearing cardboard and um, stuff. <laughs> We're going to be doing some stuff today, you guys. Some fun stuff, hopefully. Oh, there is what I was looking for. Mm. Let's and see. I'm just waiting for David. I don't see any comments from Facebook. I don't think I'm on Facebook. I think I might have to pop off and pop back on, which I hate to do. But I may have to redo. Oh, my gosh. I'm all excited for today, and we're going to have technical difficulties. Oh, hey, hey, see. you guys. You know what, babe? If we're not on Facebook, can you do me a favor and mm. just hop over there and tell everybody we're on YouTube? Because I don't want to go off and come back on. Because Facebook has been giving people problems all weekend. All right. Hey, Dorothy. Dorothy, we're going to have to have lunch before you guys, like, move to Tucson for good. It's not giving me the option to post. On... Oh, because yeah. you're probably yourself. Like, right. on the top. Yeah. Oh, no, that took me to FanFest. Hold on. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Oh, Lori says you're, Lori, am I, are we on Facebook? Because I'm only seeing red comments. And so that's generally just from. Um, I can't see anything on Facebook. It's, I don't think so, because I'm only seeing red comments. It doesn't look like Facebook is live. It says that the video should start soon. See, I think Facebook is having issues because I noticed, because um, Paint Pixie has been doing, um, like a spring um, craft-a-thon. And I know that Lisa wasn't able to go live yesterday. Um, and so some people are having some issues. So I think we'll just hang out on YouTube and we'll just, and on, and on TikTok, on YouTube and TikTok today. But if we can let the folks on Facebook know, that would be awesome. I'm trying to, it's, the system keeps bouncing me. Facebook's mm. bouncing me all over the place. If I have any retailers who are on who can hop on to, who are on the, the Recycle Facebook page, who can hop on and just write a note that we're on Facebook tonight, that would be awesome. And I can't even text my peeps because... Um, it, it is literally just letting me... There we go. It was only letting me go between me and FanFest. Oh, it says, Kim says, yes, you're on Facebook. All right. So, Let's see. Know. So maybe I'm just not seeing the comments from Facebook, so you'll have to... Well, I guess you got to find me on Facebook, though, huh? Am I on the Roy Cycle page, Kim? Maybe I put, picked the wrong destination. <laughs> I have priors. I've been known to do that before. 
Look, we missed one Sunday, y'all, and we're just out of practice. That's what happens. I'm going to have to log out and go back in. Oh, like it was down. It wasn't letting me do anything. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna, is it okay if I go ahead and get started? Get started. That's I'm going to go ahead and get started, you guys, because we have a lot to accomplish tonight, and I do not want to run out of time. And then as soon as David finds me, uh, we'll take the time, because I can't see everybody. Um, just, oh, Lori says, oh, my bad, just YouTube. Yeah, because I'm only seeing red comments which are generally from YouTube, but we'll, well, you guys are here, right? So we'll just go ahead and get started. Hopefully other people will come and look for us on YouTube. I don't know. So as you plan um, to go live. I know, I scheduled it on the, on the chingadera. I'm not seeing any live. Apparently I'm not supposed to say that. It's like a bad word, George said. Is chingadera a bad word, you guys? It doesn't feel like a bad word. All right. Okay, well, we'll just do YouTube, babe. It'll be okay. We'll say hi to everybody on YouTube, and hopefully, if I have any retailers who are here on YouTube, the retailers who are on the Recycled Treasures page, if you guys could pop on and just leave a note and let everybody know we're live on YouTube today, that would be awesome. I would text y'all, but my phone is my second camera. Yeah. Hey, Carmen. I don't think, for some reason, we're not streaming to Facebook, but Facebook's been having issues. So I think we should just, I'll show you guys what we're going to work on today. So I'm going to put, hey, TikTok, I'm going to put you guys down so you guys can see my table so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Maybe. Oh, Lord. Is it something with StreamYard? It may be. It may be our Wi-Fi too. Maybe it didn't have enough to go both places. So, um... Oh Lord, I'm gonna just have all the challenges today, apparently. <laughs> so I I think we should just move forward with YouTube, babe. Okay. Oh, were you able to post though? I was able to post. Okay. Just Thank saying you. go to YouTube. Yeah. So um, I've been playing you guys with cardboard and stamps and decoupage and some other stuff. So I thought we would come on and play together. This is my small sample that I did. And I don't know if you guys can see like the corrugated cardboard. Um, so what I did was I stamped this first and then I kind of fussy cut and pulled off the cardboard so that my artwork stayed put. And then, so I get to have like this corrugated um, cardboard underneath. And then I had some scrappy areas that clung on. So on this one, I just decoupage those areas. And then on this one, I played with a little bit with the cracked gesso and milk paint to kind of create the space around. So everything is corrugated except for the flowers. And I use embossing ink. On this one, I use clear embossing ink. But I think I've preferred the black embossing ink because it looks more graphic, right? So we're gonna play today with some embossing ink and um, some fussy cutting and some watercolors. And I played around a little bit today. This is the recycled vintage wallpaper decoupage paper. Um, and then this is the neutral ticking that I decoupage over the corrugated portion of the um, cardboard. Just playing around. This one, I think I need to do a little bit more with it. I need to go in maybe with some glaze and add some shadow around the flowers a little bit. But we're going to play today, but we're going to make a door hanger. So I have my piece all cut out into a giant tag. Um, and I don't know yet. I have a wooden tag here. I may glue the cardboard onto this one. I haven't made up my mind. Yep, maybe you guys can help me make up my mind. Because I was thinking I want my cardboard to have enough weight to hang on my door nicely. So maybe after we're done, I'll be hot gluing it onto my wood. And I even cut out like a little washer. We're going to paint it to look like a rusty washer. Hopefully we'll have time. But why don't we go ahead and say hi to everybody, babe, before we get started. What? You want to say hi to everybody before we get started? I'm, I'm testing something. Just keep going. Oh, okay. I'm going to put you guys down to the table then. 
and we will get started. I have this piece of cardboard that's cut out already and I have my Iron Orchid Design stamp. The stamp that I have pulled out is the Peonies, Peonies, I guess depends on how you pronounce it. The Peonies stamp, Peonies, Peonies, I don't know, but the Purdy one, right? Um, and I like it because it has like um, spaces in between these areas right here. And I think it's gonna be really fun to watercolor. I also thought it would be fun, I almost did this, if you use like the sunflower stamp um, in conjunction with like the corrugated metal in the decoupage area. We may still do that, we'll see. I find that I get um, focused or hyper-focused on a specific decoupage design and I use it over and over again. So you guys know, remember me in the, in the um, neutral ticking during the fall? I keep finding myself picking up the corrugated metal like a lot um, lately. But we're going to stamp first and I'm just gonna use black ink for the initial stamp because this is just basically a space saving stamp. This one is. Um, so that I know where to trim. But let me kind of decide where I want everything to lay before we get started. For some reason the sound, your sound. How do I sound on on YouTube, you guys? Like you it's guys can tell me. Share it to Facebook. Thank you, Shannon. It's not good? I don't think it is. Um, oh, the vintage wallpaper. Thank you. That one is pretty. It reminds me. Although when I look at wallpaper samples, I never find the wallpaper that I imagine in my mind. But, you know, I think if we do that one that way and then should I just do maybe maybe we should just do one. Um, como se dice, we'll just do one um, leaf in between the two. I think we'll do that. And I don't have to worry about them overlapping because we're going to cut them out anyway. So let's get started though. Can you say hi to everybody, babe? Sure. On YouTube, we got Flea Brown, Shannon Booth. Kim Lamar from Buffalo, Joan Volkman says Happy Palm Sunday. Oh. Lori Kentner, Dorothy Lage from Parker. She's over in Parker. I'm sorry, Dorothy. Yolanda <laughs> from California. Melanie Wisner from Pennsylvania. Uh, Kim Lamar, Curious Farms Market. Uh, next Chapter Home Decor. Uh, let's see, Ruru 2. Says yes, it is a bad word. Flea says it's also a bad oh, word. Oh, I did not know that. You guys let me say it and didn't tell me it was a bad word. I, yeah, there's one part of it that I know is bad. Chingoneta? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. The first syllable is bad that I'm that I know of. Oh. So, uh, Patricia Browning from Michigan, are you not on Facebook anymore? No, it's just a it's just a, a today, today thing, thing apparently. For whatever reason. So I use a software to go live in multiple places and I programmed it to go live in both places but for some reason um, I did not go to Facebook so can you take a look at your microphone is your microphone into your shirt oh, it is it is okay let's see if that helps microphone check let me um okay is that better that is much better much better okay Okay, is that better, babe? That's a lot better. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, Jenny Marmion, now on is me. Hello. Hi, Jenny. Redeem says, yikes, late. No, you're not. We're late. We're so late. You're yeah. good. Maybe that's what she's saying. Yikes, you guys are yeah. late. We are late. Uh, Julia Usury says, you sound fine. Everybody says you sound fine. I can hear, though. It was, yeah, that's that's a much better sound you're getting oh, now. It, it really was. So I am just gonna roll, I left my ink pad in the house, y'all. So I just squirted a little bit of ink on a plate. Oh, I'm gonna do one more thing with your microphone. I'm gonna roll it onto my stamp. I'm gonna get these stamps on here really quickly because this part isn't as important as the rest of it. So um, I'm just gonna stamp this on here. And I think I should stamp this one a little bit closer. 
Get a little closer. Can you move your microphone to the center of your shirt? Move my mic to the center of my shirt. Because you tend to talk to your right. Oh. Okay. And you're not there. I'm using way. You guys see how much more ink I'm using this way? If I had my ink pad, I wouldn't be using this much ink. But I'm going to stamp these really quickly because this stamp doesn't really matter. This is just going to inform where we're going to fussy cut um, in a few minutes. I'm going to put that one right there. And then I want some leaves on here. I just got to figure out where I'm going to put them. I think in the middle would be good, right? You are soft. I don't know what it is. You don't say? I Am know. I soft, you guys, or can you guys hear me? We can hear you, but it's not right. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, baby. No, that's a, we need to have somebody look at it who knows this stuff. This is just where we are, which is frustrating I'm just trying to make sure my edges are good because that's the important part for this part of it. And then I have my second flower here and let's get some leaves on here. I'm just gonna use this one double leaf. And this one is the IOD chrysanthemum stamp is what I'm using for this project. I'm gonna be using some watercolor and some white gesso. Now, normally if I were gonna be really stamping this, I would, um, that whole leaf is going to get lost. Maybe I'll lose the flower. Um, I'm, I'm not really worrying about um, masking because I'm going to be cutting around these anyway. So I don't have to worry about masking. But let me heat this up really quickly so that my ink isn't running all over the place. I should have had that flower facing down a little bit. But you guys will get the idea once we get going. Oh, Joanne says the sound is much better. Thank you, Joanne. It is, but it's not good. It's, just be <laughs> it's better. It's just not good. And I'm just drying this ink because I don't want my hand to like transfer the ink somewhere else because we are going to fussy cut this now. And all I have is my blade, which I meant to change into a sharper blade, but I think we'll be okay. And I'm going to go around and cut through. So I have this piece of cardboard. It's corrugated cardboard. And I just want to cut through the top layer of the cardboard. I don't want to cut all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fussy cut around these shapes. And um, my leaf here is overlapping my flower. But I think I'm going to make the decision to keep the leaf. So I'm going to start there. Because otherwise, I'll forget y'all. And I'll cut the whole thing. And we don't want to do that. But I think this is going to be a super cute door hanger. I almost did like a round piece and did the same thing. And um, to make like an insert for a wreath. So that's an idea for this process too. Especially if you did like the sunflowers and the corrugated metal. I think that would be really fun. But my brain kept like reorganizing um, this project over and over again. So this is where I settled finally. And I am just going in with my um, blade, you guys, and I'm literally just cutting around the edge of the flower. When I looked on Pinterest, there are a lot of like really talented artists who do this, um, but they'll like sketch on it and then they'll go in and cut it out. But I cannot sketch anything to save my life, so I'm cheating and using stamps. But you could use stamps, you could use stencils, right? Can you guys see what I'm doing okay? And I'm just cutting through the top layer. I don't want to cut all the way through the pair, all the, the pair, the paper, although I could, right? Um, and have it go down to the next layer. That would be an option, but for the sake of today, and this is a cool part of using the stamps because like this part wasn't really detailed enough. So I can just go back in with my stamp and finish that off because the stamp is always going to be the same. 
And one of the things I'm going to do one of these days with these stamps is go in. I did one project and stamp some of my paper scraps so that my different paper, my different petals will have um, topography on them. If I thought we had time, we'd do some of that today, but I already know we're not going to have time because we were late. So how is everybody doing? How y'all doing today? Y'all can tell I'm struggling today. I'm a little flustered, but how are y'all doing? You are quiet, baby. You okay? I am disgusted with our sound. I think everybody thinks it's fine. Though. I know, but it's... I guess working in radio has rubbed off on me. I want to be able to hear things properly. I know it's okay. It's just not as good as it should be. That's all. I told you I was having problems earlier. So one of the projects I've been working on, you guys, is we're going to start a new series on YouTube. Can we talk about it now, babe? Um, this week. When are you starting it? Do you, did you... Well, you just said you're starting a new series on YouTube, so yeah. I guess we're talking about it. I'm going to start it on Wednesday, because we have, like, footage for four different videos I've seen getting um, edited. So we're going to start a new series on YouTube, you guys. It'll be uploaded every week, and it's going to be like a behind-the-scenes, and it's George and I um, making stuff. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I haven't really been making time for is one of my favorite things, and that's taking the things that I, like the bigger pieces, like furniture, um, I don't know, the bigger projects, and we're recording them, and we're taking you guys along with us. So the first video will post on Wednesday, um, and then on Sunday, oh man, I lost my blade. On the Sunday after the video posts, then we'll zhuzh up whatever we make. So like this week we took some frames and we made them into shelves. They are so cool. So next Sunday, so after you guys see how we build the shelves, we'll come back together the following Sunday and we'll zhuzh it up. So we'll paint it or whatever we're going to do. I haven't made up my mind what I'm going to do yet. Hmm, I have to think about this. If I cut that all the way out. I gotta think backwards for a second, you guys. Maybe I should have masked it off just for myself. And if my blade was sharper, this would be a lot faster. Just kind of dawned on me that uh, we're late. Sound is kind of wonky. Don't show up every week necessarily. We better be careful. Somebody's going to report us as crackheads. Oh, my goodness. Baby. Be nice. I'm starting to worry about them. They it's were so... life, baby. What? It's called life. Mm hmm It was. I was tired last week, you guys. I took a nap. And I just couldn't. I don't know. I just, I had nothing left to give. <laughs> Sound like Claire Huxtable. Um, Joan Volkman asked, what are you putting on the stamp, paint or ink? So I'm using ink on the stamps. And this is literally just a placeholder because we're actually going to use some embossing ink on these stamps when we get ready to actually paint them. I hope we have time to paint them. I might be cutting out for the whole video. No, I'm just kidding. I'm almost done. And I'm just going around the outside of the stamps because we're going to pull off the portion of the cardboard that's next to it. So to reveal the corrugated um, portion on the bottom. And it's a cool way because you're creating dimension because the flower is going to be sitting on top and the corrugated will be on the bottom. I like the effect. I think it's cool. So um, I've cut all the way around this. This part I'm not sure about, but I think we're going to be okay. I'm thinking. We'll see what happens. And so I'm going to go ahead and wet this part right here that I'm going to be pulling off to make it easier because I want it to pull back pretty clean. And you guys can help me decide for the corrugated portion, should I paint it or should we decoupage it? 
I can show you guys how to decoupage over the corrugated cardboard if you'd like. You guys can help me decide. And I'm just going to wait a few minutes, you guys, because I want that to really seep in to the back side of this paper so it can help that um, the glue on the other side release so I can pull it off cleaner. And while we let that sit for a few minutes, oh man, what do I do with my little piece? Let's get our first coat of paint on this piece. This is, I'm going to put this right here, right, to serve as, um, my bones are colliding, to serve as a, um, I don't know, like a nut that's on there. Like, a, you know how tags sometimes have that on there. And I'm going to put weather vane as my base coat. I like using weather vane as a base coat when I'm painting like a, a rusty finish because it's like a really warm gray color and I think it helps to emulate the metal a lot better than just using black. Yeah, everybody's saying decoupage, please. Decoupage, please. Okay. Decoupage it is. You guys know it's hard for me. It was hard to convince me to do that decoupage. So I'm just going to put the first coat so we can start letting that dry while we work on the rest of our piece. How many of you guys watched the craft-a-thon yesterday? I did a caddy using the, um, the corrugated metal, my new favorite. You're not supposed to love your children, any of your children, more than the other, but the corrugated metal is my favorite right now. Okay. So we let that sit for a few minutes and you can see how it's discolored, right? So now I'm going to start pulling this back. And I do know that this particular cardboard was a little persnickety earlier. So we'll see how well it peels back now. But because I scored the top, it's only going to come up around it. And I didn't wet that portion really either. So it's only going to pull up around my flowers, which is what we want. But wetting your um, cardboard first really does make it peel off a lot cleaner. Normally I like the little bits to cling on, but because we're going to be decoupaging and not painting, since you guys have decided, um, I really want it to be fairly clean. So. We're going to try to get it to all pull off. Ooh, that's pretty nice, right? Now, if I wanted to do like multiple dimensions or multiple layers, I could go in and even carve this one, right? So let's say if I wanted the lead to be deeper, I could go in and carve through the corrugated portion for the leaf, and then the leaf would sit a little bit deeper than the rest even. But we better not tempt fate today, because we only have like an hour and a half or an hour today to hang out. It is warm here today, isn't it? Yeah, it's... it's I mean, it's probably, it's probably only like 85, but you know. It's been so cold. Yeah. That my body is registering that it's hot. Now, if you peel your paper back and it does leave some bits, those can be fun. Like on this piece, um, I went in and I actually decoupaged the bits that clung on there. Um, I still need to go in and add some more black to my rust here, but we're going to watercolor ours today the way I watercolor this one. Or I'm going to use watercolor. I'm not a watercolor artist, but today I'm going to use watercolor. And I like using it because of the transparency of the paint. It allows you to add like multiple layers of color and really get like beautiful dimension on my flowers. Tucson Jungsters says, we love that one too. Looks great on the front of that China hutch that Jackie painted. Oh yeah, I saw that hutch. That was nice. Um, Hi, Tammy. Lori Eldridge, 
I just finished decoupaging clipboards. Use some of the papers, absolutely love it. Uh, Dorothy Lage, I could see using this technique to make three-dimensional flowers by cutting out cardboard flowers and gluing on top. Yes, you could do that too. You could do, like you could just do a portion of the flower, right? And glue it on the top and have a portion on this one and still carve down to the next layer. So there's a lot of um, opportunity for expression in this process, which is why I'm excited to share with you guys today. Okay, so all of my um, corrugated portion is now peeking out. And believe it or not, we're going to go over, we're going to paint this whole thing with white gesso because we're going to come back in and we're going to do something else. I literally only wanted, um, I only stamped this portion so that I would know where to cut. And I'm going to dry this paper right here really quickly because I don't want to have that moisture under the gesso. You okay today, baby? Yes. You're so quiet. Isn't he quiet tonight, y'all? I, I did <laughs> not get nearly as much stuff done as I wanted to today. Oh, I know. For this whole weekend, actually. David is preparing for his comic convention. Um, this is the first time in two years? Three. Three, years, three years because of COVID. And so he has a lot on his mind. But we're going to get it done. And it's going to be wonderful. Okay. Why is that so satisfying for me? Like, isn't that already cool? I can leave it like that, but we won't. Let's get some white gesso on here. Um, and you could use, if you have chalk paint on your, on your craft table, you can use that too. I just know that my watercolors sit really nicely on the gesso. So that's why I like to use it whenever I'm using watercolor. So I'm going to paint this whole thing because we want a bright white background for our um, our decoupage. And we also want to have a nice bright background for our watercolors as well. So we're going to go over the whole thing with the gesso. I should have done a round circle to use as an insert for a... Um, my idea in my mind, you guys, was to take a round piece of cardboard like this and use the sunflower stamps with the corrugated metal. I think that would have been super cute, especially for summer. So this one will probably feel more springy and maybe I'll do the sunflower one for my porch for summer. Oh, and I do want to show you guys because I finished, I know we have been working on other projects and I know some of y'all are thinking Royce ain't never showed us the pictures of her other finished projects. I did post a reel yesterday showing the cloche. I did finish that. You guys remember we made the three-dimensional butterfly using cardstock and we used the copper leaf on the back. Um, let me see. I did load pictures of all three of my projects. Well there's two of them. The cloche and the picture, right? And then my super bushy um, wreath which I like <laughs> but it does look unruly doesn't it and I ended up using um, um, succulents in my wreath but that was the um, cookie tin lid, lid that we used to make the insert for that one and of course this is my style you guys knew I wasn't going to use a whole bunch of flowers but you could absolutely use more flowers and we used cable um, what do you call those things? Self-adhesive cable mounts is what we used in order to attach the wreath to the cookie tin. But you could use anything to make an insert, even cardboard, right? So I'm gonna put that away. I remembered to bring my jar of water out tonight, so I'm happy about that, right? Is David buying comic books? That's no, what he is not. <laughs> <laughs> David's trying to sell comic books. Oh, I know. David spent his whole day in um, camera. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Keep me on track, girl. Help me out. His whole day. I was just painting this white. 
Let me get my lid on because I don't want my stuff to dry out. I don't know why that doesn't. Okay, there we go. And let's dry this and then we can get to the fun part. I'm trying to decide if I should decoupage first or if we should do the embossing first. I don't know. I changed my mind right before we came on. That's why I don't know. Yes, David, we missed your chatter. You help keep us entertained also. That's the word on the street, babe. I just don't want to get anybody in trouble. Oh, are you upset because I told you not to talk about that? Well, you know. I don't know. I don't even remember what I'm not supposed to talk about. Oh, so. good. Good job. <laughs> what are you looking at on your phone? I'm playing... Uh, Baby. What do you call it? Bubble something. I'm looking for the questions. Lori Eldridge, have you finished the flower pots yet? No, I did not finish the flower pots yet. You know what, Lori? It's over there. I have to circle back to it. I have to tell you guys a secret. I am so terrible. If I do not finish a project while I'm still super excited about it, it's hard for me to return to it. But I'm going to. I was actually going to do, I have a really special project that I want to do. But I may have to do an actual YouTube video because there's tons of layers to it. And I don't want to spend three weeks doing it live. So I may do a YouTube video for that one. That's the one with the correct gesso, right? Yeah. Okay. Because I've been looking at the French, um, oh, what was the name of the pot? It just skipped my brain just that quickly. That I want to emulate. So I already bought some things that's the right shape. Um, and I have a really good idea on how I'm going to emulate the finish. It's just going to be a ton of steps. So that one's probably going to be a YouTube channel. I mean, a YouTube video. Because then I can edit out all the drawing and all that stuff. Like right now. Thank you, Chris. The picture was super easy, right? I just put a transfer on it. That's why I love, you guys, whenever I go to the thrift store, I always buy the white crockery. Um, the pictures, the crocs, because they're so versatile. You can put a transfer on there um, and you have a brand new piece. And if you're someone who has a booth, then that's something that someone's going to want to buy, right? Because it's super simple and it will fit into um, any type of home decor. That was my stomach. Laura says she has six projects going right now. Sweet mother of pearl. I heard it all the way over here. I wasn't going to say nothing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. What else? So tonight we are making some layer art pieces using cardboard. Are you guys tired of seeing cardboard yet? Because I'm not tired of using it yet. So that's just it, right? We have our flowers cut out. Everything is white gessoed. I'm just trying to figure out if I want to decoupage first and or if I want to do the flowers first. You know what we're going to do, you guys? Let's do the flowers first. Um, and then if we have time, we'll do the decoupage. Let's do that. And let me get my... So I have a couple of things. Um, I have an embossing pen, which I love using, especially on this, this um, textured surface, because sometimes your stamps, because the surface is textured, it'll miss a part. So you can go in and finish it with your pen and still put your embossing powder over it. And um, it'll work just like the embossing stamp does, which is really cool. So I am just using um, some clear embossing ink that I have on my ink pad already. And I'm using some Tim Holtz emboss embossing powder. And this one is called Walnut Stain. Um, it's just like a really dark brown. I didn't want to do a black because I thought that would be too stark, but I want a dark color so that it looks more graphic. You killing me, Smalls. I guess David has nothing left to give this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I had have my weekend last weekend, huh? I'm just putting some more clear embossing fluid 
on my um, ink pad because I've been doing a lot of embossing lately. Let me put that away before I cut myself. We don't want to do that. So um, the tricky part is that I'm going to want to go over this, right, the exact same way that I did the last time. And let me make sure I should do the leaf first. I'm going to do the leaf first. So I know exactly where that went. And then I'll go around the leaf. We'll do that. And do I have any alcohol wipes over here? Because I don't want to dirty up my ink pad. Oh, I have another rare. So I am just going to load the clear embossing ink onto my rare. And I want to move fairly quickly with this because I don't want my ink to dry before I get to get my powder on there. So if I get a little quiet, you guys, it's because I'm focused. And I'm going to do the leaf first so that I know which parts of my flower I want to keep. And this is stamping just like any other stamping. I'm just using the clear embossing ink instead of um, the regular ink and or paint. And for this big flower, I want to see which part I don't want to load. I'm not going to want to load this little corner over here. Any questions, babe? Um, no. Remember, this is only YouTube. Only YouTube? Yeah. I see how he treats y'all. No, he no. said only YouTube. Most of the questions tend to come from Facebook. Oh, I see. And because I can only see YouTube. Well, because we're not on Facebook. And I can't see Twitter. And you can't see Twitter. Or not Twitter. Um. TikTok. What do you call? TikTok. There you go. Thank you. And so I'm going to do that one. I'm going to go ahead and put my embossing powder down now on this one before my, um, my ink dries. Have you guys all embossed before? It is a magical process. I love it. And I love using the stamps with the embossing powder because what's going to happen is it's going to create a resist wherever I emboss it. So all these little like cavities or like cells that the stamps makes, I'm going to be able to just drop paint in there and the paint is not going to bleed anywhere else. So it's a really cool way to control the outcome of your um, painted piece by adding the embossing powder and I'm going to tap off the excess powder on this plate because I'm cheap and I don't want to waste any of it now you guys see where I have like gaps um, and there are some gaps in the design but the corrugation is coming up through the top so there are places in my flowers where there shouldn't be gaps and there are so I'm going to go in with my pen and just kind of draw them and then go back over with some more of the embossing powder. Maybe if I can get the lid off. Can you get that off for me, please, baby? Sure. I seriously cannot get that off. My hands have been a mess lately. We've had a lot of clouds, and I think that's why. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm just like guessing Right, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't want it to look like it's missing. And so I can go in right over those marks I made with my pen. And just imagine what you could do with the pen, even just by itself. How fun would that be to be able to draw something out and emboss it? So like if you're gifted 
and you're able to draw from scratch, you can draw something with an embossing pen and then emboss your drawing to give it a three-dimensional effect. And so we have this one more flower on the bottom, which is a smaller one. So let's go over that one. So there have been a couple of questions on the Facebook page this week, which I think was hilarious. Um, the one from yesterday was, what's the best prank you've ever pulled? I was trying to think, because the only time I really pulled pranks was when we would go to volleyball. In high school, we would go to volleyball camp in the summertime. And um, this one particular camp, I think it was Deepin Como's fault. She's a prankster. We were playing pranks on the other team. And I mean, it was bad, you guys. Been gay in toothpaste. Um, saran wrap over toilet seat. Pretty hilarious. Although I'm sure our coaches and the other adults didn't think it was hilarious. But we all did. I don't want overlap, so I'm just kind of holding it up over here because I want my images to be... I want it to be clear what each image is. And so I'm just going over it to make sure that the stamp touches the surface really well. And I can see where my gaps are because of the texture. So I'm just going to go in with those. And you guys see how I keep reusing the same powder over and over again. And if there's any powder left, I'm going to put it right back on this plate. And I am going to um, put it right back into my container. Waste not, want not. What is the name of the embossing pen? It's from Tim Holtz as well. I'm gonna look, I'll look at it really quickly and I'll tell you. Kathleen Hoovis, hey David, have you heard of the horseshoe sandwich and the pony sandwich originated in Springfield, Illinois? I. I would have to hear what's on them. We used to go to Springfield a lot. Why? Um, my mom, that's where they would do the um, communications training for law enforcement across the country. Oh, okay. And because she was a police in mom. command over communications, she had to go to that training every year. So I would go with. She'd actually, I'd drive her. <laughs> and then she could, like, write off the trip. So, I'm like, okay. Got me like three days off of school, so. You're all in. So now that I have all of my um, stamping done and the embossing over the top, I can go over this with the heat. And what happens is the powder melts into um, the embossing ink and you get like this raised um, edge. I don't know any, any other way to explain it. And if you use metallic powders, um, they are so beautiful. I love the reveal when you use metallic powders over projects like these. And so the embossing pen is um, Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Pen um, is the name of the embossing pen. I love Tim Holtz. I keep contemplating carrying it, but then I, I just, I don't know, y'all, if I want to pick up another brand. You are stamping up rep too? Is that what I'm doing? Is this stamping up stuff? I'm sure there are different brands that carry them. You're killing me, Smalls. Who, me? Yes. Why? You're so quiet tonight. I've got nothing to say. Deborah says, missing the banter. What's up? I know, Deborah. Get him. Ask him. What's up? 
Nothing. You have nothing left to give, baby. I just I don't have anything to say. I wish I did. <laughs> I was just looking at uh, at Twitter. That's never good. See, baby, it's because you're doing other stuff. See, normally, I'm watching two different social medias. I know. I don't know what happened with Facebook. I hope everybody made their way over here. How many people do we have from on Facebook? I mean, on YouTube right now, babe. On the YouTubes, we are up to sixty-one. Oh, that's pretty good for YouTube. So that's very. Our, that's very good for YouTube. So we have a lot of people who came over, over to the dark side. <laughs> yeah, and and a lot of folks don't comment on here. I get that. Yeah, because they're watching on their television. Yes. And so you guys see how I wish I could show you guys. It's like shiny now, and so now that's going to stay put right there, just like that. Um, and I'm going to be able to paint on that. And the lines will stay put. So I just, should I paint first or should we decoupage first? What time is it? It's it is. 5.58. Yeah. Um, so a horseshoe is one slice of bread, a hamburger patty, fries, cheese sauce, like a Welsh rabbit sauce. Um, a rabbit sauce. I, I had to have eaten that because it's all the things I would eat. So I'm assuming I did. I just don't recall it. But now I want one. Now we're hungry. Are you hungry? I am hungry. I'm hungry. Like we went, our local um, Genevieve's is a local, I guess it's a bona fide restaurant at this point. Well, it's a coffee shop. A coffee shop, yes. They do crepes, a crepe brunch on Sundays. And so we went and had crepes this morning. I had strawberries and whip. What did you have, babe? I had uh, brown sugar, cinnamon, bananas, and caramel. I should add the strawberries and whip. It was a little too sweet. Oh, mine wasn't too, and those crepes are huge. Yeah, they really are. This is a watercolor palette, and I'm gonna apologize ahead of time because I don't know what colors these are. Um, Lexi made this water palette for me because she loves me. <laughs> Um, and I've used it to death. You guys can see how ugly it is. But the thing with watercolors is, like, it's fine. So I'm going to spray these, and we're going to paint. Now, if you don't have watercolors, you guys, you can take, especially if you're using, like, a boutique um, um, chalk style paint, because they have a tendency to have more um, pigment in them, you can use that and just water it down. I think I want to start off with like this really, I have this really yummy orange right here. So I'm going to start with the light color and then we'll work our way up to dark colors. And I'm just going to, the cool thing about this too is I don't have to work, like it's going to look like flowers when I'm done regardless of where I put color, right? So I'm literally just going to be dropping this color on here and um, it's going to work because all my lines are established because of the embossing. Uh, Wonder Mom 7, I'm so late. Is that cardboard it with is. a peony stamped tissue paper? No. So we we took the peonies and we used embossing ink and powder and heated it up. And we cut out the shape on the cardboard. Joan Volkman, your hair dryer gets hot enough to emboss. I thought you needed a heat gun. This is actually a heat gun. This one, okay, I love this heat gun. I want to say this is by Ranger as well. It is. This is a Ranger heat tool. You guys see me use it a lot to dry everything, but this is actually what it's made for. So, yes, it does get very hot, and it does get hot enough to emboss. And I do have that on my Amazon store if you guys are looking for it, because I really do love it. And if you're a creator who does a lot of lives, you guys notice how quiet it is? That's why I bought it, because it's so super quiet. So I don't have to yell when I'm using it. <laughs> and I'm just laying down color. You guys see, like, I don't even have to be precise. Um, whoops, I probably shouldn't have painted my leaf yellow, though. But it's okay. It's a light color. I'll go in and put some green over that and it'll be fine. 
Actually, I think I will. I'm going to use yellow as my base over all of it. And then I'll go in with the green. Um, and the yellow can act as a highlight, right? But I like this because I legit don't have to be careful. Now you can, if you are like want to be, you can just like drop color in the cells um, and they'll stay put because the little lines of embossing acts like a little like gatekeeper. Or you can be like me and just be haphazard. But nobody will know it by the time you're done. <laughs> what is Easter, baby? Is it tomorrow? Or next next week. Oh yeah, Easter's next weekend, and then um, Comic Con is the next following weekend. What's everybody doing for Easter? Wonder Mom, I love that username. Whoa, that just went hot fast. Sorry. Maybe because I looked down when I said it. I bet you, you know what? I bet you you're pushing on the um, the connection. Um, I put it on my back so I wouldn't be pushing on it as much. Something just changed. It, it just shot through the roof. Is it still hot? No, I turned it down here on the board. Oh, okay. And you guys see how it's settling into the actual texture of the cardboard. But like even that I think is super fun. So I'm going to dry this layer before I go in with the next layer. Because I don't necessarily want them to mix. This is just like my base layer. And somebody's looking is going, oh my gosh, she's being so haphazard. And I am. But this is the look that we're going to go for. I did my sample board already. So you guys can see the yellow that's in there. Even in the leaf, I have some yellow in there. And the embossing really holds the lines for me um, in my drawing. I didn't have quite as much texture on this one. And so you guys can see how much tighter the flower is. Like there's a lot more lines in there. But I think we'll be okay. Who's Tucson. Gonna try this? Oh, what do you say? Tucson Junksters is having all the kids and grandkids over. Oh, and all the even the new ones, Tammy. Tammy just had new grandkids too. Oh, congratulations! I wonder if we'll have a grandbaby. If what? I says I wonder if we'll have a grandbaby. We have one. Well, I know, I mean, for over for Easter. Oh, oh, Lord, don't do that, you guys. Don't rub your brush across there while you're adding heat. Did y'all see what happened? I heated my embossing ink and I drug my brush across there. Don't do that. And I learned the hard way, too, that this puppy gets really hot. So if you're working with a synthetic paintbrush, uh, don't be trying to paint while you're drying with this because you will melt your brush. <laughs> Ask me how I learned that lesson. And so now that I have the yellow down, let's start going in with some different colors. And I'm like a cheater watercolor. So I'm showing you guys the easy cheater way to do stuff. Um, I want to say this is a green right here. It is. So let's go in with this deeper green. I'm going to wet it. I like... Um, painting into a wet surface because it makes the paints move around a lot more. And I'm going to leave that yellow there because I want that to act as a highlight. And I'll go back in later with a lighter green and play around in those places. And I'm just rinsing my brush and some water over here on the side. For this one, I want to go in with some orange. Since we said we're going to use the paper, um, the decoupage paper on this portions on the side, there's a lot of blue in here. And so I think that the, the orange will pop off of that blue really beautifully. So we're going to go in 
with some orange, especially around the base of this flower. And again, I don't have to be super precious about it because the embossing fluid is going to hold my lines really well. Or the embossed lines, I guess. It's not fluid. Yeah, I know what I'm trying to say. I've been doing, well, I've done a couple, a few interviews with our regular readers and I need to conduct some more. So if you would be interested in like hopping on like a 15 or 20 minute Zoom call, just a chit chat, let me know. I want to get you guys input about some things. We got a hot rider in the neighborhood apparently. Can you guys hear their car hot riding? Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do the dry brush. Oh, you know what, Alyssa? Somebody else told me that too, but I use the link after the one I actually dry. So if you guys use my link and it has the European um, mode on there, um, let me know, because I thought I went in and redid it. I actually used the link, because I, if I have something on my Amazon shop, you guys, it's literally something that I purchased before. I try not to suggest things that I don't know how they're going to work. Um, so let me know if that's still the case. Because the one, I, I used the same link from when I bought mine, so I don't know why it would have the European look on there, but I think that happened to Dorothy too um, when she bought it. It's just really weird. I am gonna go in Can you tell us a little bit about the comic convention, babe? What's going to be there? Mm. Yeah, go if you want. Don't go if you want. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, oh, I got to take those off. Those are killing my ears. All right. Um, let's see. What are we going to do? We Well, there'll be comic books and artists, gaming... So if any of your kids like to play card games like Pokemon or role-playing games like Dungeons and & Dragons, we'll be doing that, that kind of stuff too. Now there's actually going to be a Pokemon tournament, right? Correct. Yes, Ed Webb over at Sci-Fi Cards is putting up the, it's called a sealed deck tournament. So you buy basically a deck, you get what you get. And then you play the tournament, and he said he's got prizes for everybody that enters. Oh, cool. And you get to keep the deck. Oh, nice. So it's basically you're buying your Pokemon cards, and then you get to play and maybe win stuff. Okay. So fair enough. Um, I want my middle to be bright, you guys. So I'm just going in and kind of picking up a little bit of that orange so that the middle of my flower can be a little bit brighter. Elizabeth says, I just checked the link. It's still a green box, which is the Euro model. Hmm. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, I heard the hot rod. Yes. I, I, that's all I was hearing over the headphones. Oh, was that? Were hot the cars rod. in my stomach. So. <laughs> is that what's the matter, baby? You're hangry? I think that's a little of it. I know. It's been a long weekend. It has. I'm just tired from moving boxes. Um, so. I think the thing that the average person will care about more than a comic convention is the after party. So our convention <laughs> is going to be Friday and Saturday. Yes. Friday from 4 to 10, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. But then at 7 p.m., we're going to have an after party at the convention 
at the same space. Yes. And that's going to be, we're going to have a full comedian show. So we'll have three comedians and a host. So four comedians. Mm -hmm. So that'll go an hour to an hour and a half. And then we're going to, we're going to do karaoke. But because it's a comic convention, we expect everybody to be dressed up. So it's cosplay karaoke. Cosplay karaoke. And we have a beer garden that will make people want to do karaoke. <laughs> Shannon Booth thinks you're napping, baby. I wish. I threatened to take a nap today, but I did not. I was working on this. I was so excited about it that I was working on this project. So no naps for me today. But you guys see how I'm just like sloshing paint around? But because I have those embossed lines there, that you can still see the flower. So as long as you have like an idea of what you want the overall colors to be, like it's gonna be fabulous. I like it. It's like a cheater move. You guys know I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm all in on the cheater moves for creating art. And so I'm going to go on with one more color, and then I think we're going to have time to decoupage. Maybe. What do you guys think? Should I do one more color? Because you guys kind of get the idea. Or should I do with the decoupage? You guys tell me. What do you think? What does TikTok have to say? Um... TikTok usually doesn't talk too much. They just watch. Okay. I know. TikTok is a little different. People pop on and pop off and pop on and pop off. So you don't know. And I'm looking from above because sometimes it's hard to get a sense of um, what's going on with your flower when you're really close up. So I'm just going to go in with some red. Um, but I'm really going to focus kind of on the center of my flower. Kathleen Hoovis, so is this a door hanger? Yes, this is going to be a door hanger, Kathleen. I took my actual like um, wood piece and I used it and I traced it out on this cardboard to make the shape and I may glue this onto my cardboard. I mean to the wood, I haven't decided yet. It just depends. Because the cardboard I'm using is pretty thick, so I may not need to. And so I'm just going to go now and kind of pull that color up, but not a ton, though, just a little bit. And I'm probably going to go in and pick up some of that color, too. But I want it to be kind of consistent, right? I don't want it to look like I just planted some red in there. I am such a cheater. I just love the way this process makes it look like you painted. <laughs> and I'm literally just depositing color, right? So you guys can absolutely do this. Let me, I think I'm going to pick up color around the edges. And so if you put down too much color, you can just dab it right back off. Yes, I think I like that. And so let me do my other flower and then we'll move on to decoupage. Do we get votes about what I should do next? Everybody says both. Everybody says both. The decoupage is, is going to be a little involved because we're going to have to decoupage over corrugated um, cardboard. But let's do that. Oh, but you guys want to see the paint and the decoupage, huh? I need to let this color rest a little bit anyways. One thing that I've learned is that um, when I rush my layers, I'm more likely to have them just kind of disappear into each other. So I'm going to go ahead and dry these colors and then I'll let them rest. So if you find that you're not able to like build up your layers the way you want, because you, you just keep reactivating the bottom, um, you can dry it and let it rest and or you can seal it so I'll, i'm i'm gonna dry this i'm probably gonna seal this layer with some clear gesso and then come back in with some new colors or with the same colors and be more deliberate about where i'm putting them so that um i can really build those layers of color and i'm not reactivating the color underneath each time but you guys can see um right how i'm able to create these beautiful flowers and totally cheat because my embossed lines are staying put. 
but let's do some decoupage. We have to do some decoupage, right? It's like a requirement. And if your board starts curving, you can just spray the back of your cardboard and usually that'll be enough to um, flatten it out. So I'm gonna leave that there and I may come back to it. I think I should cut this out and pull that up too, but maybe later. Okay, so I'm gonna put these away. They're kind of wet though, so I don't wanna close them up. I'm gonna put those to the side and let those dry out a bit. And I'm probably gonna come in here later and play around and add some more color. But what do you guys think? Like I'm totally cheating, but it looks like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> um, one more color, I know. Oh, thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. So we have our corrugated portion that's wet. The tricky part about decoupaging, decoupaging the corrugated portion is that even though this looks like it's narrow, um, because it goes like up and down like that, there's actually twice as much surface area as it looks, right? Because if I took this paper and I folded it back and forth, it would look like it's a lot narrower narrower but there's still at the same amount of surface area so when you're decoupaging over a corrugated surface like this just remember that you want to trim and leave twice as much paper as it looks like you need because you're going to need that because i actually want to push the paper down into those areas i don't want it to sit on the top and because of this beautiful orange color i really want to have this kind of a blue toned metal next to it i think it's going to make it super pretty i could put this next to it but they're going to be close to the same well i don't know the part touching let's see if we can find a piece that has both let's use this piece because then i can have the bluer side next to the flower and still get a little bit of the um, corrugated metal on there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. And you guys know the Recycle Decoupage paper comes in 20 inch by 30 inch pieces. Thank you, Lori. And you guys, I love the idea of mixing and matching. So we have something that's so beautiful and so dainty, and then we're gonna put this corrugated metal right next to it. But I think it adds a lot of interest. And so I am actually going to, let me see if I wanna use this matte gel. Oh, I covered it up. I wasn't sure if this gel was clear or not. Let me double check because I'm thinking I'm gonna need something a little heavier than what I normally use. Um, but I didn't know if this was gonna dry clear or dry white. And I think it's drying clear, so we could use this. So I'm gonna use, and this is just a matte gel. Um, this one's from Liquitex, but you can use whatever because I think that I'm gonna need that extra um, thickness to hold my paper down into these grooves. And this is gonna be tricky because I have corrugated portion here on the top and I also have the corrugated portion on the bottom. I don't know if I can pull you guys out anymore. So I'll try to keep it both in the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and put product down on these um, portions. And the cool thing is this is gonna stay open longer. So it's gonna give me a little bit more time than if I use like um, a clear coat, right? So it's thicker and it's going to stay open longer, which is gonna be good for me because I'm gonna need that extra open time because this is gonna be a little bit tricky, y'all, because I would love to be able to lay this paper down and not have any of it tear. And I'm gonna put a little bit here just in case, although I shouldn't end up way over there. Okay, so I'm gonna take my paper and line it up and I'm gonna miss my paper really, really well, you guys. Um, a, so I don't get wrinkles and B, so that I can, the paper is more malleable and I can push it down into the crevices um, of the corrugated 
portions of my cardboard and I'm lifting it up a little bit because I want to alleviate the um, you can't pull it tight and push it down at the same time because then you have to tear the paper. So you want to allow your paper um, to have enough um, slack so that you can push it down into the corrugated areas. Now, if you don't have enough, what will happen, the paper will just tear, which isn't awful, but I kind of want this blue to be... Um, like not broken, if that makes any sense. And so I'm gonna do this section and then I'm gonna dry it. Before I move on to the other section so that I'm not pulling the paper back out of the crevices. And I'm not gonna worry about the paper sticking to my flowers because the flowers don't have any medium on them. So there's nothing to stick to it, right? The water's not gonna make it stick. And so I'm going to dry this portion before we go on to the next. And this is a little bit more tricky than just doing it on a flat surface. And I have quite a bit of tearing up there on the top, but I think I could still cheat. I may just cheat and come in with some glaze and just make it look like I did it on purpose. <laughs> Laura's gonna start her seventh project now. Thank you guys. I hope it turns out good. We'll see what happens. I did a test strip today. Let me see. Before we came on, I was curious to see how it was gonna look. And I think it came out pretty cool. What do you guys think? So I tore it here at the top when I was trying to do it. It still doesn't look terrible, but certainly the areas where I was able to get it laid down without tearing it look a lot better, right? So that's what we're gonna go for. But this is a much larger piece and it requires a lot more handling. You know what, why am I trying to do one big piece? Well, cause I guess I have two on that side. I probably could have cheated and just done a small piece here, right? And that would have probably been easier than trying to do this big piece all at once. So I'm just drying it so that that can kind of adhere and I don't have to worry about pulling that part up when I move on to the next section. And I think I'm gonna cut this too. Like, why am I trying to do this all in one big piece? It really doesn't matter, does it? I'm just making it harder on myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this and then I'll come back and do a final trim on that other piece in a few minutes. Let's move on to this section. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more of my gel medium down. And I'm being really, really generous with my gel medium. Um, A, because I don't want it to dry and B, because I'm working on um, a layered, I mean, um, not layered, Mira. I'm working on a textured surface. And so, actually, it looks really cool. Um, yeah, okay. I just, I guess. Either way, right, would be cool. I just really, you guys know how you have a picture in your mind of what you want it to look like. Although there have been times where I've set out to do one thing and my project has done something different and then I love the final result better than I love, you know, my plans. I'm curious, how many of you guys would be interested in seeing like backstage? I probably should have asked this before I recorded four videos, but how many of you guys would be interested in seeing like the backstage portions of what we do around here? When we're like taking stuff, <laughs> when we're taking junk, J-U-N-Q-U-E junk, and making it into like useful things that we can use in our homes because that's my favorite part of what I do. And I'm spritzing my paper and I'm, I'm not wetting my paper, but I am spritzing it pretty good, especially for this, 
because I want it to be malleable, right? I want it to be able to push it into those um, recesses effectively. And so having it be wet really does help with that. And I'm actually gonna use the same brush. So I'm gonna hold my paper up though as I go so that there's enough slack for me to be able to push it down into the recesses. I hope I'm in the frame, I am. And you guys see how I'm holding this up as I go? Because if I lay it down, I don't have enough slack to push it down into the recesses and I end up with tears instead of having it just lay down. Yeah, everybody wants to see behind the scenes. Okay, good, because we've done a couple of videos already. I should do outtakes too, because there's a lot of those. <laughs> I'm excited for this Friday. You guys won't probably won't see it till May, but um, we're going to be taking some old metal and making a coffee table. So I think that I'm going to have to do each section kind of individually, but it's hard because I have this whole piece right here that I need to do. Hmm. I guess I'm just going to keep doing it and see what happens. I hear your tummy, baby. I'm sorry. My husband is hungry. That's why he's so quiet tonight. I'm gonna wet that again because it's drying up a little bit. And I do not want that. This is actually gonna look really cool. It's always nice when a plan comes together, y'all, because it doesn't always come together. Y'all have been here, some of my mishaps when my plans did not come together very good. But making that slit down the middle um, has given me leeway on both sides, which is nice. So let's dry this section and trim it and then we'll see what we have. I like it. Okay. How much time do we have, baby? It's 6.30. Is it 6.30? We started late, though. I'm getting the side eye, y'all. You get 10 more minutes. <laughs> Outtakes for sure. Oh my gosh, Chris. Let's just hope, you know, it's so hard to video when we're working. And so the first video I'll be editing, I don't even know. I'm, it's probably going to end up being all voiceover because um, I just struggled. It's hard because we're outside with the power tools and then we're inside putting the pieces together. And then some of the stuff I'm letting George do and some of the stuff I'm doing. So it's a lot of moving parts. So I'm not sure what kind of quality you guys are gonna get on the videos, but you guys will get to see what we're doing though. I just love this um, corrugated metal paper. It is so fun um, and there's so much stuff. I know I shouldn't love my own stuff, but I do. I love this design. <laughs> Does anyone look close enough to take David a snack? <laughs> right? Some granola? Would that be would that be nice, baby? No, no granola. My husband is like anti healthy food. You and Dom both. What kind of snack do you want, babe? I don't know. We'll figure something out. 
So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna trim around the flower. It's gonna be so easy. Um, let me just get this dry. And I wanna dry this really well so that I know it adheres really well. So when I start wetting my paper and cutting around the flowers that I don't have to worry about anything lifting up. So I really wanna make sure that this is dry. In any places, cause I have a spot right here where I missed. I can actually go back in and just add some more paper in a little bit. But you guys have seen us do the water method before when we cut our paper. So this is going to be the same thing. You're just going to, because you can see the flowers through the papers. So you're just going to go around the edge of the flower and you're going to tear it right there. And if you get a little resistance, just add some more water. And I am drawing my line on top of the flower, um, not underneath it, because I don't want, I would rather have it um, be too close to the flower than to cut down into the corrugated area, which still would not be like, you know, horrible, but I would like to maintain the corrugated areas wherever they are. And I'm literally just drawing a line of water just like we do when we cut our paper and it's cutting right there along the edge of my flowers. And you can always go back in, like if there are some areas where I still have paper overlapping, I can just go back in later, um, you know, with smaller motions just so I'm taking off just enough of the paper all the way around the edge. And it's nice that the edges are deckled because, um, and there are a couple of areas like here, I probably should have cut those areas out, right? And I may still do that because I can still go in with the paper um, and decoupage those areas. But what do you guys think? I think the blue um, corrugated metal against that orange flower is super pretty. Can you guys imagine some sunflowers? With the um, corrugated metal, that will be so pretty. I'm just going to trim off my excess and I'll probably go in with my um, sanding block to really finish that. But before we sign off tonight, I want to give you guys a good idea of how this is going to look. So I'm going to do this really quickly. What do you guys think? Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. And any of these areas, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and just decoupage these areas, these white areas. Um, and I still wanna go in and add some more red and add some more colors to my flowers and maybe even go around the edge of my flowers with um, some darker colors to create some shadows so that they um, kind of pop off of the surface even more. And I may even go in with some gray paint or paper. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that's the the premise of. Um... <laughs> but we all um, know how David wants to wants her to be his rich sugar mama. I'm not sure what's that in reference to, but y'all cracking me up. 
Thank you. I think it's going to be so pretty when we're done. I just love that gray blue against the pink. I think I might go into my edges here and add a little purple even just because that would pop really beautifully against that blue color. You guys know that if you want contrast, you use colors from opposite sides of the color wheel. Um, and so the reason why blue and red go together so well is because they're on opposite sides. So maybe I should put some more red around the tips right next to my paper instead of doing the center of my flower. But I will tidy this up and I will show you guys the final result. And I still have my little rusty, where'd it go? Oh Lord, what did I do? I have a, I've lost my other piece. My little rusty bit that I'm gonna put up here. And then I can probably even put like welcome or something on here and hang this on my door. But um, this is maybe some copper metallic embossing. I know, Chris, I thought about that too um, when I made the other piece. Um, when I made this one, I thought that the copper embossing would be really, really pretty. Oh, I did, I dropped the red on the edges on this one. So maybe I'll do that. Um, so I'm gonna go in and add some more paint to this and I'm gonna kind of finesse these little white spots with some more decoupage paper so that it looks, you know, more cohesive and complete. And then I will make, take a picture and show you guys the final result. But hopefully just doing this process with me will um, inspire you guys to do something fabulous. You guys know what I say, I just come and show you guys the ideas and then you guys take my ideas and you put your awesome sauce on it and then you guys come up with something that's fabulous. So I look forward to see what you guys create. But unless we have any other questions, um, I guess my David is like packed up, y'all. <laughs> my poor baby. He's so tired. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you guys showing up even though we were late tonight. Um, and we appreciate your patience with our technical issues. Hopefully next week we'll be back on YouTube and Facebook. But um, there isn't anything that I've done here today that you guys cannot absolutely do. You guys already know that. Um, so you can do this. You can do it today. Thank you guys so much. I did want to put a link up here. If you guys um, would like to become a Roy Cycled Insider, you can just take a picture of this link with your camera and click through and you just leave your name and your email to become a Roy Cycled Insider and I send out emails periodically. I'd like to say weekly, but I have not been doing a good job of sending out weekly emails. Um, but I also send out monthly resources for all of my insiders. And if there are any announcements like new designs or sales or anything that's going on, you guys will hear it first. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. You guys have a blessed week and we'll see you guys next Saturday. Good night. Next Sunday. Next Sunday, Sunday.